Hello, I'm Derek Smalls, and you're watching or listening or both to Rock Shop Live with Eric Broadbent. He's the Bent Broad. <laughs> You're watching Rock Shop Live, brought to you by Stuart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stuartguitars.com. Also brought to you by Idea Bench, makers of hot rod inspired pedal boards and pedal board accessories at ideabench.com. Microphones for Rock Shop Live are brought to you by Rode Microphones. Now, here's your host from Ontario, Canada, guitarist Eric Broadbent. Hi everyone, a happy Wednesday to you. Welcome to Rock Shop Live. We're going to be doing another part tonight, taking a look at the uh, Yamaha RS the 720BX Revstar guitar. We started to do that on Monday. We had the guitar arrive and I did an unboxing, which was a real bummer. Uh, kind of blew it because I had internet, it wasn't internet problems. I had streaming issues that were really, really plaguing me. Um, and <laughs> I've literally been doing tests all week long. It's funny, you know, I've been doing this for about, uh, about four and a half years, going on in my fifth year of broadcasting on YouTube and there is that learning curve for the first year just you know so many tests and trials and and things of that nature uh, to get things to work and then it was just like smooth sailing it's like your favorite car you know new set of tires everything is uh, uh, you know just running smooth that's how everything was running with the shows and all of a sudden something some little curve went crazy somewhere and uh, it, it's hard to really analyze and so I've had some really good friends here. A lot of them sometimes are in the chat here. They may be in uh, tonight as well too. Matt Krill and Eamon Wise, two very good friends of mine. And uh, they've been a real blessing to me, kind of acting as um, stand-ins for, for my co-host on my other show on the uh, Inside the Gilliverse with uh, Tom Schnauz. So I was having one of them play the role of Tom and then uh, the other uh, being the role of the guest just so I could have bodies on screen and get things to work. And I, it's one of those things where sometimes I tweak things to the point of over-tweaking them and then you bust something that uh, wasn't even broken in the first place. So I think we've I think we've got it locked down pretty good. I'm looking at numbers here on the screen right now, and uh, I'm relatively confident, uh, you know, comfortable with these numbers I'm seeing as far as bandwidth issues and things like that. So I think we could be okay, uh, but literally been working around the clock. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to do two things. We're going to have a look at some specs over on the Yamaha website, and then we're going to actually do a little bit of playing. And my playing was really, like, in my personal opinion, my uh, my playing was really bad on Monday night because... Several factors were working against me that night. First of all, the technology was working against me. And I'm one of those people that gets train wrecked really or distracted really, really easy. Um, and because the internet issues were acting up, it just killed the mojo. It killed the killed the whole excitement of getting the guitar. It certainly uh, killed my my, you know, like the, the the mojo on the guitar. I just just couldn't play to save my life. I was knocking the guitar, the guitar out of tune, you know, just from, you know, over attacking it too hard and it was just was not a good night. So I've been doing a lot of testing around the clock since since Monday, and we're back. We're going to do it the proper way, fingers crossed. So let's jump over and say hi to a few people in the chat, and there'll be some more people uh, filing in here shortly. Uh, Ed B is jumping in. Nocturnal Butterfly, my beautiful better half, Sandra Lee. Don Shepard is here. Uh, Landshark Mark is here as well. Rick Hefner. Uh, been a while. I hope you're well, he says. Yes, doing very, very well, and it's nice to uh, to have you here. And uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this also, but to a Monday, it was like about 91 degrees here in the house. Uh, we only have air conditioning in the bedroom and Junior's room, very, very old home. Uh, so tonight, I've got a, my fan on really low, just on, on like one. And I've got a ceiling fan up there, which doesn't really do much anyways, other than circulate the air. Um, but I'm, com I'm relatively comfortable, um, so I think we should be good. Okay, so we're going to jump over here to a website for a second. Let's scroll back down here. I'm going to jump over here one sec. All right, jump over here. So this is over at the Yamaha website. Uh, Sandra Lee will share this link uh, throughout the program here in the live chat. Uh, it's just usa.yamaha.com, and then you go into the products and musical instruments, and you can go through guitars and basses and uh, keyboards and all that. They, they make so many products, right? With such a, a massive, massive, um, you know, repertoire of products. And I should kind of preface this a little bit by saying, too, this whole process of getting this guitar was something that's been in the works since January uh, of Winter Nam. And the only person that kind of knew a little tiny bit about it was Sandra Lee and, and my uh, good friend Brian Cote, because Brian and I were hanging out pretty much 24-7 uh, most of the time at NAMM anyways with Eric Jr. And I kind of let him know a little bit about it, but I had him keep it under wraps, you know, not to say anything to anybody. Um, and being working with the, the good folks at Yamaha, it finally made its way to me. It would have been here a little sooner, except uh, we didn't know about this, this uh, pandemic that was about to hit us. 
and that just pretty much pretty much uh, stopped shipping globally uh, everywhere. And then when shipping did resume, uh, it, it's a really funny story. Um, I won't share where I got the exact facts from, but when when shipping did resume, shipping prices were astronomical, like three, four, five times the price on a you know let's say on a container, you know like a, a you know a full skid load or a full container load of products anywhere from from over there in China to anywhere in, in in North America for that matter. So they had to all a lot of companies had to wait until you know the shipping rates were back to at least close to affordable or close to normal and so that that's kind of got all that ball rolling. So this guitar came in, um finally got it uh on Monday, but the cool thing was it's it was set up by uh Pat Acompolitano who is their senior designer and luthier at uh, at Yamaha Guitar Group. And I have never in my life, this is a hand to God, I've never played a guitar with a, attention to frets. The, he, he dressed the frets. I'm not, exa- I'm not exactly sure what he did. I can probably go back to the emails and, and read them. But the frets feel like glass. And I don't mean that in a way I'm saying sharp. I mean just smooth, silky. Uh, everything is consistent. The intonation is literally to die for. I mean literally to die for. It's just absolutely beautiful. It plays itself. Um, he put nine to forty twos on it, and you know some people might think that is uh, uh, kind of odd for a Bigsby uh, guitar, but uh, I like it. And at first, it felt like tens, and then it just took me a day or two just to get accustomed to it. And we'll we'll talk about some more of the the cool stuff on that as well too. Some of the uh, additional things that were put on the guitar. So we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna have a look at some of the Revstar guitars. We'll look at the models, and I'll show you the one that uh, we're looking at here tonight. We'll scroll down here to models. And there's there's uh, my baby right there, the RS seven twenty BX B for Bigsby, uh, beautiful beautiful guitar. So we're gonna actually go over here. That's that's just kind of a picture of it. We can get into the lineup here at the very bottom. Actually, probably do it at the top here, and then we'll jump over to Sweetwater's website. I don't have any affiliation with Sweetwater or anything of that nature. I don't get any commissions for them. Uh, although I should probably set something up with them someday. Uh, but they have some really nice detailed specs on their website as well too. Okay, so uh, where are we at here? So we're gonna go to the lineup. Here we are. And this this is quoting American prices, I think, by the by the looks of it. So there it is, there the RS seven twenty BX. Uh, the st- the style, feel, and sound of the RS seven twenty BX are unmistakably classic. But no detail was left. Uh, to, to, uh, simply was left to tradition. It's custom voice pickups, Bigsby vibrato inlays, inspired by our nineteen seventy Superfighter series, and elegant gloss finish combine timeless inspiration uh, with uh, modern prestige. And let me see here. Yeah, we need a name. I still have to name it. Sandra's texting me right now. She's saying, "What's her name?" Um, so I'm, uh, you know, when you have a new baby and you're thinking about the baby's name, is like, and you, you, you until you check out the hospital, sometimes you don't have the name fully picked. While well, all my guitars are named after Sandra Lee, and she, she has a nickname, Ruby Roo. So I've got Black Roo and Tiger Roo, Cartoony Roo, um, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, Cherry Roo, you know, Purple Roo, all those different names. So so far, the working name. Uh, until we until we did, we officially decided the name, it's going to be Ebony and Ivory Rue. And I think she actually almost picked that herself. So I'm not sure. I'm going to say not sure, but thinking, <laughs> thinking on it. And I always name all my guitars. Um, so, anyways, let's continue on with some of the specs here. So we've got a three-piece mahogany neck, uh, maple and mahogany body, and it's quite heavy. I don't know the exact weight. It doesn't say here. It may say on the Sweetwater site, but it's very very heavy. Um, and I liked it, not to the point of uncomfortable heavy. But it's it's heavy. I like heavy guitars with sustain. Like my Kramer, uh, my Kramer Pacer's got like I believe a full maple body on that thing, and it's very very heavy. Uh, and I like it. It's uh, you know you certainly notice it when you put it down, but it just sustains. It really really sustains the guitar. And it's got the push pull dry switch, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And I I really love that. And uh, it kind of gives you the um, kind of like kind of along the lines of a of a single coil sound, but not. Uh, it, it still has a clarity and punch without hum- any noise of a humbucker, but even maybe a little bit more. For someone like myself that's a high-gain player, uh, high-gain pickups, high-gain amplifiers, I wouldn't have thought I would have liked that that dry switch. I do a lot, and we'll go over that tonight as well. And then, of course, the Bigsby B50. Uh, so that's uh, quite nice. You know, we only have one other Bigsby here in the house, and that's on Junior's um, uh, Eastwood Airline 59.3P. Beautiful guitar as well. It's kind of the twin to this one because it's a nice, beautiful white guitar too. Anybody else I'm missing to say, uh, hey, there's uh, Kill Noobs. I haven't seen him in a very, very long time. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, and also uh, Dale Palmer's jumping in. Nice to see you. Great, great, great. This is awesome. Okay, so let's jump over to the Sweetwater site just because there's a few more details on there. All right, so we're going to scroll down here. Um, we kind of read some of that. It's uh, Here, we can talk about the pickups a little bit. This talks a bit about, more about them. It says a pair of Yamaha YGD custom VH5 
Uh, humbucking pickup serves up a wide variety or a wide tonal range, further enhanced by the push-pull dry switch that enables single coil-like tone. A guitar is also equipped with a Bigsby B50 like we talked about for old school pitch uh, expression. Uh, with excellent craftsmanship, distinguished tone, and great playability, the Yamaha RS720BX Rivstar is an outstanding instrument in its class. It, it certainly rivals guitars two and three times its price. It talks about the pickups. We won't go through that again. No, we will talk about that push-pull, um, uh, the, uh, the push-pull dry switch. So this will kind of break it down for you better than I could explain without these words. Yamaha, Yamaha's innovative dry switch on the RS720BX Revstar gives you the tone shaping capabilities of a coil tap circuit while maintaining the noise-free operation of your humbuckers. The push-pull dry switch is actu actually a passive filter that cuts out low frequencies, giving your tone even more clarity and punch to cut through the mix. So that might sound nice when you're going into a lead. Uh, switch to, if you're, I use Helix for all my tones, switch over to a, le a lead and pull out uh, the dry switch. That might be something to try. Uh, you'll achieve the same enhanced snap and twang that you would expect from a single coil pickup without introducing any noise into your signal chain. So very, very cool feature. And I didn't know if I was going to like that, and I do. I really, really do. Uh, this is a good point to bring out as well, too. The uh, uh, pr prodigious sustain from set neck construction, mahogany neck on the Yamaha R720BX Revstar is set directly into a mahogany body. Um, the guitarist at Sweetwater like the set neck design because it maximizes vibrational transfer through the guitar for impressive sustain and helps enhance note definition too. Clean tones ring out like a bell, while overdriven tones can sustain for days. Uh, packed with personality, you know, there's no sense to really go through all that stuff. Um, it's, so here's more of the features. We've just kind of talked about that. And uh, there's a video here I can probably play, which, uh, where is that? Was, is it this one here? I think that, let me see here. Uh, that's not the one I wanted to show. There's one with actually our friend Jeff Schroeder from Smashing Pumpkins. Let me see if I can refresh the page because I think it's the default video on this page. Let me refresh it. Okay, and I'm almost sure it's the first, it's hit, it's a video with Jeff. Where did that go? Here it is. Yeah, so there's there's our good friend. He's a good friend of the family, Jeff Schroeder from Smashing Pumpkins, playing this exact model. So let's uh, let's give it a bit of a listen here. I'll play it and uh, I, I won't get any copyright strikes from this because this is Yamaha's actual video, so we should be good. Um, Let's uh, mute my microphone and I'll listen to it with you. There we go. And actually, yeah, Sandra's telling me as well, too. I've got a kind of a, uh, a, a tungsten uh, ring light shining on me right now. I can change the color of my ring light from tungsten to uh, to daylight, and it's uh, it's making the guitar look cream, but it is actually white. I could probably, you know what, let's let's just play with that for a second. Um, and uh, let me see here. Yeah, I know she's saying the comparison between the video you're looking at and the one I'm holding uh, is it looks like two different guitars. Let me change the color on the light just for a sec. That's going to give you more white now. It was a bit of an illusion with the, uh, it still looks a little cream. It's just I was using a, a, a tungsten light, so it was, a, it was more of a warmer color. All right, so we're going to jump over to the bigger screen here. Let's see if we've got some tone happening. I guess I need my wireless, don't I? Hey, there's Pooh. Bigsby, the old uh, floater. <laughs> 
and I don't use a Bigsby much. I'll use it occasionally for some uh, clean parts, just for some, just for some subtle, subtle vibrato. And Zach Thong is here. Nice to see you, buddy. Nice to have you here for sure. Okay, it's gonna jump over to something here. And I, apolo I, I apologize for some of the technical issues I was having there at the top of the week. And uh, you, you can, uh, I tr trust me, I've been, and Sandra knows as well too, I've been working around the clock aside from my business as well too to get this because I, I take this stuff very, very seriously for you guys because when I go live and you guys jump in here like you're doing right now, I really appreciate that. And it's the least I can do, you know, in my opinion, you know, to try to give you the best, you know, for your viewing experience while you're viewing, uh, you know, while you're here. And uh, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's see if we got tone. We should have. Let's go over to Helix Rack. There we go. So there's the humbucker in the back. Here's middle. And then neck. Very, very warm. Nice. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to stay on the back humbucker. I'm going to pull that dry switch. Subtle. But I like it. It's just that it's that you know how I always talk about using the kinky boost in my, my tube amplifiers when I used to do that, and I'm using the kinky boost with helix after the amplifier. It's one of those things that you may have never noticed it before, but once you start using it and you turn it off, it's like something's missing. Something just that extra little bit of mojo. And I think that's what this is. i I will probably be spending a lot of time with this switch engaged like that and like I said earlier for the people that have been here since the top of the, the start here the frets are to die for uh, just they're, they're, they're just like butter everything is so exactly the same intonation give 110 percent every broadcast thank you so very much i appreciate that here we go all right there we go a little bit bigger screen so you can see the most important thing which is the guitar <laughs> all right you know let's try we'll try we'll, let's let's warm up slowly here let's instead of trying to bust a nut right out of the gate and bring that low e down just a hair and these tuning keys, I don't know what the ratio is on them, but they are so precise. I mean, you just move my hair. And then, of course, there's locking tuners on the back. I'll try to show you without damaging the guitar. I haven't got a single scratch on this thing yet. i got to be so careful to do it tonight. I mean, I'm not one of these people that, you know, is paranoid about getting a scratch. But this is, it's a beautiful guitar. And, you know, the, the coolest thing is, I haven't touched a thing on this guitar. Like, sometimes I'll adjust pickup height or I'll do something. I'll just do something, right? This is the first guitar that I've ever owned in my life that was set up by, in my personal opinion, one of the greatest luthiers in, in the business worldwide. Young, he's young, very young, but he's well-respected uh, around the world. I mean, you know, he sets up Billy Sheehan's basses. He knows exactly, you know, where Billy likes his strings. He, he knows all the artist stuff at the back of, his, back of his mind. He's just great. I've never had a guitar set up this good, and I don't want to touch anything. I was going to lower the action a little bit, and I thought, you know what? As I started playing it, it's, it doesn't need to go down anymore. Intonation's good, playability's good. Just, I don't want to touch it. So I want this to be as factory as factory can be for as long as it could be. All right. Uh, yeah, Pusan, like a BBE, uh, just add something extra. I agree with you 100%. Yep. Okay, so let's get uh, let's get rid of the microphone here in a second. Okay, we'll play a little, play a little bit of Pass You By. And hopefully I got good levels between the uh, backing tracks and... Uh, the guitar here as well, the Helix. So I'm using Helix rack again, as I mentioned. Okay, let's get this ready, and then we'll mute. And it looks like everything's running good so far. We're doing really, really good. Uh, drop frames are good. I've only at 0.9%, uh, so I can live with that, especially with the data that I'm pushing out tonight. Okay, I need to go to the proper album. Bear with me here. All right, and we got Pass You By. And I'll just let this play, and I'll jump in with it, make sure I've got a good level here.
lost myself just a little tiny bit at the end there. I could have brought myself up a bit in the mix, but that you see me playing with that push pull switch a lot. I'm really liking it engaged. Now, the one thing I did see someone on some of the Facebook groups, I think it was the uh, Facebook uh, Revstar group, somebody had said they modified theirs with a push push as opposed to a push pull. That I might consider doing, but for the most part, because I want to keep this thing factory, I probably won't. But I like the idea of push push rather than push pull because sometimes it's it's hard to get to that because you could just go like that, like that if you need to hit it, right? Uh, let me see here. Matt Curl's here. We were just talking about you earlier, Matt. Thanks for jumping in. There we go. Okay, let's try. Let's see if we've got anything else that's clean. Um, yeah, we could try this. Hints on Matt's here. All right, here it goes. We'll give it a try. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll work our way up, and I'll try to... Because <laughs> some of the stuff I'm going to do towards the end, I'm going to be abusing the guitar a little bit. I might be throwing it out of tune, and this will save me at doing a lot of tuning in between. Uh, Ed says, great plank. Definitely mojo tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better. I've got a good temperature in the house here. Uh, the internet is... like the, the My broadcasting stuff is working really, really well. That just really threw me for a bad loop on Monday. Um, I was really bummed because I didn't want to let you guys and girls down that, that do watch the show. I really want to uh, make it worthy of your time. Oh, that was a bad chord. It does not wreck the mojo yet. That was a horrible chord. All right, here it goes.
go. That's just for you, Matt. That's the song called Shirley. That was written for my mom, named Shirley. And I'm really loving this guitar. I'm really, it's just, it, I connect, I really connect with this guitar. I really, I can't say enough good about it. Uh, Louis Ferrell is here. Uh, guitar Man 45, nice to see you, nice to see you. All right, we're going to keep it, we're going to rock it going. Keep it rocking. Keep it rocking and keeping, keeping it going. Arms up to here. Just to here. All right, let's try a song called Fly. And for that one, we're going to need some simulated trem. So we're going to need some. Let's hear that dry switch on that, baby. I'm going to try the dry in the middle. I like it. I always forget that riff. I think I need just a hair more volume on the helix, just a bit. All right. And there's a song called Fly. I'm going to jump over to the dirty track. That's our, our dirty preset. <laughs> Snapshot, I should say. Here we go.
that chord as long as I possibly can and even acoustically listen to the sustain just beautiful listen to that and I've even got a noise gate on there too and uh, Lewis is saying check out uh, uh, where was it again check out Mateo oh I know Mateo very very well big fan yes and that would be something that would be a good guest for the show for sure definitely a fan awesome so let's get rid of that tram don't need that anymore okay We'll probably do a few more. How are we doing on time here? 9.36. We're doing really, really good. It's nice when um, it's nice when I don't have to worry about tech problems. I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at drop frames from 0.5%. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about this. It was really bumming me out. I, I, sw- I swear to goodness that I thought someone had a voodoo doll of me and was poking internet wires and stuff like that to ruin my internet. I don't know what it was, but it's fixed now. It wasn't the internet. It was what I was pushing out to the internet. Okay. Let's see what else can we try here. We can try this. Why don't we try some sick and tired? I'm sick and tired of problems. Technical problems. All right, give that a try. I really like the breakdown. It's my it's my little nod to the Beatles in the middle of this song. Certainly, I'm not trying to put myself on any platform of the Beatles. Don't, don't get that in your mind. But it's just my homage or my tribute to a little Beatles piece in the middle. I really like it. Something really simple, but I think it's different for me because I don't normally play like that. There you go. Sick and tired. No, actually not sick and tired. In the sun. Why did they say sick and tired? In the sun. Let's let's make it uh, much happier.
is that? Oh, we're good. Okay, there we go. All right, we'll try another one here. We're going to keep it going. We're looking at the clock. 9.41, we're doing good. I want to wrap it up on the hour. All right, how about this? Here's one Sandra Lee hasn't heard for a long time. I know she used to love hearing this one. This one is called Touch. That's a, that's a fun one. We haven't played that one for a real long time. We're doing good on time. We're 40 minutes. Time's going by slow tonight. That's good. I love that. Okay, just don't mind me if I turn my back to you. 
I can actually tune with my tuner on uh, Helix Control down here, but I like using the strobe behind me. You can probably almost see it over my shoulder there. See that? No, I can't read it looking at the screen, so I'm just going to turn my back for a quick second. Pretty happy with the tuning. Barely threw it out, barely. In case you're wondering, when you see me tuning, like, when I, was, I was going way down past it or back up. Anytime you have like a non-locking, while you, when you don't have a double-locking uh, Floyd Rose type tr uh, tram system, and a, and a Les Paul or a guitar like this, it's always best to go down below the note so you're tuning up to the note. Never tune back down to the note because you, you don't have the even uh, tension on the uh, on the keys. It's, so it's a little trick that'll keep you in tune a lot better. Always tune up to the note. Go back down if you have to. Come back up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Brad's here. Nice, man. Nice, nice. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay, so let's continue on. We'll do a few more here. Let me see here. I don't know if I want to tune down to D yet. Um, okay, we can jump over here. Let's go somewhat more modern. And we can try this one. We'll do this one for Landshark Mark. <laughs> That's what I'm going to play. I was just noodling. Okay, here we go. This one is the uh, stripper song called Fantasy.
Okay, it's a little bit better for better playing night than it was Monday for sure. See what Mojo can do with cool people in the chat. There you go, Sean Close. Nice, nice. Everyone, nice comments. I appreciate that. It's almost still in tune. Wow. Okay, how are we doing on time? We got we got two minutes left. Okay, we're gonna do one more song here. Ready? Drop her down. This is the last song for the night, everybody. Yamaha RS720 BX Rev Star for the win. I think we got it. All right, I'm going to crank the hell out of this one. I'm going to just say goodbye now. We'll see you uh, Friday night over on Inside the Gilliverse. I've got Betsy Brandt, who played Marie Schrader from Breaking Bad, on the show with myself and Tom Schnauz. Come and check that out, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and we're going to be rocking up. This guitar is a dream to play. Thank you, Yamaha Guitars. <laughs>